All right, this video is going to go over graphing on a restricted domain. So first of all, you have to know how to graph a line. So if you don't know how to graph a line, maybe watch a YouTube video and get a refresher on that. But essentially, the way that I do graphing linears is this guy right here is your slope, and this guy right here is your y-intercept. So I always start at the y-intercept, and I put a dot. So negative 2 is the y-intercept in this case. And then the slope tells you how much to rise and then run. And if you do it my way, always run to the right. So like this one-third, I'm going to rise one and run three to the right, and then I'm going to put a dot there. Rise one, run three, put a dot there. So this linear function looks something like this. Of course, it, it goes left and right forever, so that means the domain's going to be all real numbers. Same with the range. And that would be the first one. Okay, the second one. Whenever you see a whole number, you kind of need to be thinking about it like as if it was a fraction. So this is really negative 3 over 1. So remember, the way I graph linear is I start at the y-intercept and I put a dot there, so 2. And then this tells me rise over run. Well, when it's negative, you're going to fall instead of rising. I'm still always going to run to the right, but instead of going up, I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3, run 1 to the right, put a dot. So this one looks something like this. It goes left and right forever, down and up forever, so again, the domain and range is all real numbers. Okay, write the equation of the linear function graph below. Well, find your y-intercept, which is at 1, and then see what your slope is. So I'm rising 1, running 2. I'm going up 1 over 2 to get to this point right here. Up 1 over 2 to get to that point. So rise 1, run 2, and that would be my equation. Rise over run. All right, the domain of this. This doesn't have arrows on the end, so domain is how far left, how far right. How far left it goes would be here at negative 6. How far right it would go would be 4. And there closed circles on the end so it actually hits negative six and it actually hits four so I need brackets or if you're writing it as an inequality you would use less than or equal to so negative six is my far left four is my far right bracket to close it uh, the range the range is how low how high how low it goes is here to negative two how high it goes would be here at three so, and it looks like it hits both of those because of the closed circles on the end. So my range here would be from negative two to three, like that. Okay, one page down, one page to go. Now, graphing on a restricted domain, essentially what it's gonna do is it's telling you where to cut the line. This tells you where to make cuts. So here at negative 4 and here at positive 4, I'm going to cut this line. Essentially what happens on a restricted domain is they'll tell you where to cut it, and you're basically going to want to graph this equation as if it was normal. So start at your y-intercept, rise 3, run 4. So like if I did not cut it, it would look like this. All right, if I did not cut the line, that's what it would look like, just like before when we were doing it over here. But they tell you on a restricted domain that you have to cut the line at these locations on your x. So at negative 4 and 4, you have to basically cut this line. And when you do that, you no longer care about anything outside of those cuts. So if you wanted to graph this on a restricted domain, really what it would look like, you don't have anything outside here, you don't have anything outside there, you just have to make sure that 
you get your endpoints correct. So what I mean by that is they're going to use either brackets or parentheses, or they might use like a less than or equal to or just a less than symbol. Um, if it's a bracket or if it's a less than or equal to, you're going to have solid dots on the end of it. So like this one, I'm going to have some solid dots here on the endpoints. It's not always like that though. Like, and you'll see another example where you'll see what I'm talking about. So that would be uh, this first one done. Okay, and they, wait, it wants me to identify the range. Well, the range is how low, how high. The lowest this goes is here at negative one. And it hits it with a closed circle. The highest it goes is here at, looks like five. And it hits it with a closed circle. So that would be my range. Let me write that so you don't get confused. This is my range. All right, this next one, negative x minus 2. This is as if it said negative 1 over 1x one minus 2. So start at your y-intercept. You're going to fall instead of rise, so fall 1, run 1. So if I did not cut it at all, this is what my line would look like. Something like that. But they're telling you to make a cut, and that cut is going to happen at x is greater than negative 3. So go find negative 3. If they say greater than negative 3, that's everything to the right of it. So I really just don't care about um, this stuff right here. So really what this line would look like would look like this. They did not use a um, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. It's so... Uh, you just got to make sure your endpoint over here is an open circle. So let me kind of clean it up a little bit. This endpoint here is an open circle. Then, then this line starts going. And they don't, we don't have to make a cut on the right side because they only told us greater than negative 3. They didn't give us two restrictions. So like this next one, they gave us two restrictions. That's, so I'm going to have two cuts one at negative six and one at two. So just go ahead and graph your line. It would look something like this. Okay. So if I didn't have any cuts, this is what the line would look like, but I do have cuts to make at negative six and at two. At negative six, notice it's a uh, less than or equal to, so that means it's going to be a closed dot here at negative six. And remember, I'm cutting it it's here, so I really don't care about the stuff to the left of it. All right, and then at two, it's just a less than symbol, so it's, um, it's going to have an open circle there. So at the location of my cut here at two, I need a open circle. So it would look like this. Because these are my locations of my cut. Nothing to it. Okay, and this last one, um, same thing. But this time they're giving me a negative infinity. So what that means is you're really not going to make a left side cut. Go ahead and graph your line. It looks something like this. Okay, so the left side cut um, is negative infinity. Well, negative infinity is if, if I go left forever. So the left side actually doesn't get cut. The right side is going to get cut, though, at 3. So here it's going to get a cut. Um, so I don't need anything to the right of that 3. And then you just got to make sure your endpoints are correct. So if they send you to negative infinity on that left side, you're going to use an arrow. You want to go left forever. And, and on the right side, you're stopping at 3. It's a bracket, so it's as if it said less than or equal to. So you need a closed circle here at 3, not an open one. And that's graphing on a restricted domain.